Behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Not just a place to get into someday far away. Be bold. It's something that you can tap into. A strength that will help you to get through each day by faith. Oh, oh, behold. Believe the kingdom of God is at hand within each woman and man. Just a place to get into someday far away. Oh, oh be bold. It's something that you can tap into. A strength that will help you to get through. down inside you and find a love that's been there all the time somehow oh right now somebody's broken and sad they need you to give what you have right now Just a place to get into someday far away. Oh, oh people, it's something that you can tap into. A strength that will help you to get through each day by faith. And that would be the amazing, wonderful, talented Gary Lynn Floyd. <laughs> Welcome home, Gary Floyd. Oh, wow. Well, um, if I were to meet Gary's mom, I would say to her, It's all your fault. It's all mom's fault. That's what we're talking about today. It is all mom's fault. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> <laughs> so if you happen to be a mother, please stand up so that we can acknowledge you. Yes. And stay, remain standing. So, please join me in honoring our mothers who are standing. And if it's comfortable for you, raise your hands to send them a blessing. And if not, simply go deeply within. 
each one of you as mothers, what we say in this very moment is thank you. So grateful for the way that God shows up as each one of you. So grateful for your commitment to be the expression of love in physical form. So grateful that you have taken on Mission Impossible and done, what, done your best to achieve it. And so with the deepest gratitude, we just love you and bless you. And so it is. Yeah. And I don't know about, um, about you all, but Mother's Day is a really special day for lots of different reasons. No two mothers are exactly alike. If you notice the women who were standing, none of them were the same, exactly the same. Or women of different ethnic groups, women of different age groups, some women who you wouldn't know by looking at them are mothers because of adoption, are, are mothers or stepmothers or grandmothers. And so no two mothers are alike. And today we get this great opportunity to simply honor their commitment to be a leader, to be a coach, to be a mentor, to be a disciplinarian, to do all the things that mothers do. And uh, I, I let you sit down, but uh, really, you know, if you're a mother in the room and you believe you have done everything that you possibly could do as a mom perfectly, then I invite you to stand up again. <laughs> Although in science of mind, what we do teach is really everything is perfect. It's always moving in a direction that leads to something. And so... And in some ways, every one of you who are moms have done everything as a mom perfectly. Um, but we don't often feel that way, right? And so the fact that every mother is different from every other mother, we don't have to compare them. We can be grateful for the way each one of you has shown up as a mom. And of course, we're really grateful that you've come to hang out with us today. I love um, this idea, what's worth doing even if I fail. And um, it comes from a Brene Brown quote. She tells this story in the book, Daring Greatly. And this is about one day when she was getting ready to go on stage um, and give a speech. It was a TED talk, in fact. I took a deep breath and recited my vulnerability prayer as I waited my turn. Give me the courage to show up and let myself be seen. Then seconds before I was introduced, I thought about a paperweight that's on my desk that reads, what would you attempt to do if you knew you could not fail? I pushed that question out of my head to make room for a new question. And as I walked up to the stage, I literally whispered aloud, what's worth doing even if I do fail? I think being a mom is the answer to this question. What's worth doing even if I do fail? As a mom, you don't get an instruction book. You don't get you know, we have the Science of Mind textbook written by Ernest Holmes to tell us how to understand the science of mind. Well, I was in the delivery room with Erin Fry, one of our practitioners two and a half years ago, and I did not notice a nurse, a doctor, a technician, an assistant, anyone coming into the delivery room and slipping under her pillow the handbook for being a mom. And not just a mom, but a mom to twin, twin boys. There was no guidebook, there was no instruction, and I bet every mom in the room uh, wishes there had been a little bit more instruction than just them making it up or remembering what their mom did or didn't do. But what's worth doing even if I fail? It's worth me being a great mom, influencing another life. It's worth me showing up every day even though I'd really like to send this kid off to the grandparents for a month. Yeah. <laughs> right? All of the things. What's worth doing even if I fail? So one of the reasons that we honor you today if you're a mother, and the mothers who are not in the room, all of us have mothers or mother figures in our lives that we honor today. 
And we know they ask themselves this question in some way or another. Is this really worth doing? Absolutely. Even if my kid thinks I'm failing at it. <laughs> Brene Brown says that's the place where you stand that really shows up as vulnerability, stepping into something that you don't know whether you can do it correctly or well at all, but you step into it anyway. And so she says vulnerability is the birthplace of creativity, innovation, and change. Now, all of us in the room, if we haven't been mothers, we have mothers, are mother figures in our lives. And I bet if you think about moms you're familiar with, they've had to be really creative, they've had to be really innovative, and they've had to adjust to major change. So I love what Brene Brown inspires us to remember as it relates to life in general, and today we can apply it to mothers and what they have to do. So our book of the month this month is Daring Greatly by Brene Brown, and so I loved that I was able in the early part of the book to find a couple of quotes that really connected in with this idea of honoring mothers today. And if you are wanting to learn more about her book and her writing and some of these concepts about being vulnerable, then I invite you to join in on Wednesday evening. Here at CSL Dallas, we do a Wednesday evening series every month except December. And this month, the focus is on vulnerability and authenticity, uh, focused on the writings of uh, Brene Brown and Reverend Karen Fry and our practitioner, Doreen Breedlove, will be leading that. Are there any people who were here this past Wednesday? Yeah, a few of us. And so we had a great, great time identifying what vulnerability is, and I invite you to join us uh, this coming Wednesday or any Wednesday the rest of the month. All of the sessions are 7 to 8.30 p.m. They're all free, and you don't have to have the book in order to participate fully. So please join us. And I'm really aware that as we talk about mothers and Mother's Day, mother is not limited to the biological connection that we might have with someone. I know in my own life, there are so many women who have had such a major impact on, on who I have become and how I learned to grow up and show up. And uh, some of the things I learned from my biological mother were really great lessons. They were lessons of what not to do. And then there were other women who taught me all about family and who taught me lots of different ways to really be authentic and showed me unconditional love. So if you are in the room today and you're a little hesitant about this whole Mother's Day thing, just know that you can honor the mothering instinct and the mothering behavior of any woman who nurtured you along your way. Maybe it was an aunt or a school teacher who took a liking to you and really helped you get through that hard year of fourth grade or sixth grade. Maybe it was someone who was a neighbor. So whenever for the rest of this service, and in fact for the rest of today, when you are hearing the words mother or mom or mama or mommy and people are gushing and you don't feel like you have something to gush about, or it's, maybe it's a sensitive moment because in the last 12 months, maybe your mother has passed or someone who was a mother figure to you. I just invite you to remember that the, the action of love, the action of mothering comes in many different forms and I invite you to recognize that in some woman who has impacted you. When you came in this morning, I'm hoping that you received one of these cards. You'll notice the quote on the right hand side of the card from Maya Angelou reads, the best love is the one that makes you a better person without changing you into someone other than yourself. 
the best mothers, the best motherly love comes in that form. And that's what we celebrate this morning. So, this idea of it's all mom's fault, of course, started because I was talking to some folks a few weeks ago, and about six weeks ago, actually, and I was in a group of about six people, and four of them were talking about all the things their mom did wrong. <laughs> all the things their mom, you know, oh, I'm really messed up because, you know, this is what my mom did, or, oh, it really makes me mad because my mom showed up in a certain way. And I knew that I was going to be talking on Mother's Day. So I'm listening in, like, oh, well, really? Well, what's that about? And I thought, yeah, we're so quick, at least 51 weeks of the year, many of us are so quick to blame mom. And so the question is not an idle question. Have you ever blamed your mother for anything you considered bad in your life? Show of hands. Is there any hand in the room that's not raised? I mean, really? We don't have to blame our moms, but it just seems like in our society there's a lot of encouragement to do that. And then the week leading up to Mother's Day comes, and we buy flowers, and we send cards, and we remember all of the good things. But I did go on Facebook a couple of weeks ago and ask the question, what's the worst advice your mom ever gave you? And uh, what was really interesting was that, um, you know, you, have you ever put a Facebook post up and you think, oh, maybe three or four people will respond? And then you go back 12 hours later and it's like 98 people have responded. <laughs> So I wondered if that would happen when I asked for what's the worst advice, but it didn't. I think there were probably about 20 responses, you know, a fairly normal day, and uh, because I asked for it. But one of the ones I loved the most was um, one person said, mom's worst advice always turns into the best advice. Right? I was like, oh, so whatever her worst advice was, yeah, at the time it seemed like the worst advice she could ever give me, but it's always turned into the best advice. I had people who shared things like, uh, there was a young woman who was in her 30s and she shared that the worst advice her mom gave her was when she was growing up, telling her she shouldn't do certain things because she is a girl. Girls don't do that or you want to grow up to be a woman and you won't want to do that. And so she had that message. It was the worst advice, in her opinion, as she was growing up. Uh, someone else shared their worst advice was to um, not make waves and always get along because it, they had to unlearn that when they got, became an adult to choose when to make waves and choose their battles. So I don't know, you might think of some things that didn't seem like such good advice at the time, but later as you grew older, you realized either there was some good to it or you didn't have to follow that advice because you weren't 10 years old anymore or 12 years old anymore and you could make a different choice. So. Yeah, there are some things we do because we got some advice that maybe didn't serve us. But on Mother's Day, we especially get the opportunity to remember two things. One, everything is either good or leading to good. So that bad advice helped us at that time maybe, and then it allowed us to make different choices and is leading to good in our lives now or at least it has that potential if we choose it. And then I invite you to think of the opposite. What's some of the best advice? What's some of the funniest advice? What's some of your, what are some of your favorite memories of your mom? And you have this card, and the main reason we left it blank was so that as you are thinking and listening through this service, you might write down the best advice that you ever got from your mom or another mother figure 
or the favorite memory that comes up for you this morning. Because you know what? Those are mom's fault too. Those memories, those pieces of advice. And I know I have a lot of great memories and uh, uh, some good advice, sometimes accidentally good advice, but some good advice nonetheless. And I'm betting that some of you do too. So what I'd really love to do is invite about seven of you to come up and share one example of best advice or funniest advice or your favorite memory in uh, like one minute or less. So I need seven volunteers and I'd love for you to come up here and line up so we know we have seven and we can move quickly. Who's willing to share your mom's best advice, a funny memory, a, a funny, some funny advice or best memory? Yeah, give me about three more people. And uh, we want to honor our moms, even if they're not in the room today. You know, the, the real story is that if your mom is still living or another mother figure who you'd like to share about, that on Tuesday or Wednesday, you could send them a belated Mother's Day gift because they can see you on the recording. So we've got our group. Would you come up and identify yourself and share your one minute example? Or Hi, less. My name is Shannon Kearns, and um, I guess some of the, the best advice my, my mom has ever given me is no advice at all. Um, she allowed me to marry someone that was clearly um, what might be considered not great for me, and it was the best thing that has ever happened in my life. And she loved me so much to let me do it. And um, I just have to say, like, she is a divine, incredible, exquisite woman and I'm so grateful. Thanks Shannon, that's great. Hi, my name is Linda and the best advice my mother ever gave me stemmed from the fact that she was German and went through the war as a young girl and when I uh, was born she made it a point to tell me this repeatedly. Never, w never look away from injustice no matter how small because if you do, you give it the power to grow. Oh, that's fabulous. Thank you, Linda. Uh, my name is Ted Ambrose, and I have a road story for you. Uh, my father and mother divorced when I was 13. That was 1953. When I was 16, my mother wanted to take a ride out to Abilene, Texas to see my sister who was married to an Air Force guy out in Dias Air Force Base. We lived in Stratford, Connecticut. The interstates weren't quite ready yet. And we weren't too familiar with cars. All we knew, we had a car that would burn a quart of oil every 500 miles. So we loaded up with 24 quarts of oil and headed west. And we drove nonstop, basically. We had a uh, bed, temporary bed made in the back. So we would just snooze and drive. And we got to Abilene, Texas, just fine. But we crossed the, the border from Oklahoma into Texas. All of a sudden, a thousand jackrabbits on the road. And we're doing 60 miles an hour, we couldn't stop, but we tried. That wasn't too bad, except the next 50 miles, we came across cattle grazing along the road at night. And uh, that was a little airy and scary. But we made it, we had a good visit, and we returned. To find out our oil problem was, we never changed the oil filter because we didn't know that oil filter weighed five pounds at least. And so we had a blessing to get there and back, and we enjoyed our trip. What a great memory. Thanks, Ted. 
And these sharings may be sparking some memory in you. And again, you can jot them down on your card to share them or just to remember later. My name's Steve Hurley. And uh, first, I'd like to welcome my mom who's here today visiting us from California. <laughs> We don't get to see both of you very much, so it's very wonderful to have you here. My favorite memories are memories of our table. Um, multiple times a year, my mom showed lavish care as she set um, the scene, the table, the experience for our family to come together in community, uh, both our core family as well as extended grandmothers, aunts, and uh, these are some of my most cherished memories as I go, not just once, but through the years, multiple touch points, anchor points um, that I remember from these early days. Thank you very much. I love you very much. Thank you, Steve. That's great. My name is Carla Rizor, and I had my best advice from my mom to come to this country. I'm from Peru. So that's one of the best advice for my mom, and I'm blessing to have her in my life, and I'm thanks to God, because if I don't come to this country, I don't have a beautiful son. Raleigh Rizzo is here, and thank you so much, and God bless my mom. <laughs> yeah, such beautiful, thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Joe Montoya, and uh, I, am, I, I have so many wonderful memories of my mom. I am so blessed to have such an amazing person that God placed in my life. Uh, the, the way that she, the manner in which she displayed love to us as a family and her affection is just uh, gonna be something that carries on in my life and, and filters on it's God demonstrated through her and to me and then on to everyone else. I have such an amazing mom and lots of, lots of memories. I mean, we had fun all the time, the Christmas events, and, and just like you were sharing, you know, the, the dinners and, and just getting together and just really bringing the family. She was the anchor to keep the family together. I'm great. Fabulous. Thanks. I'm Marcy, and uh, Mom gave me, indirectly, I don't even know that she was doing it, uh, but she was um, raised, the five of us, the five kids, and she had an in incredible ability to be un, uh, un uh, what's the word? Um, she could be glamorous, she could be dramatic, she could be exciting, she could be, she was very artistic and was very talented at, to, be, um, uh, to be able to draw and paint and appreciate the arts. She survived, I mean, she's no longer with me, but her ability and her inner strength to pull up from within inside of her, um, she had no real parents to help her, she had no real, um, inner wall of strength to, to pull on, but she did. She found a way to raise us five and impart to all of, all of us uh, an appreciation for the arts and for beauty and for drama that I, to this very day, have thrived on. Um, my appreciation of dance and of art and of beauty in this world and the plant world, the nature world, all came from mom. And she's no longer here, but I have a sneaky feeling she's hearing every word of this. And I am so grateful. <laughs> Thanks, Marcy. <laughs> Thanks to everyone who was brave enough, who showed vulnerability, as Brene Brown talks about in our book of the month, to come forward and share. And I know that all of us have stories about either our mom or our other mother figures who've made a positive difference in our lives. And so it really is all mom's fault. Not just the bad stuff or the hard stuff, but the good stuff too. So as you honor your mother or other women who have served that role in your life today, yeah, blame them. Blame them for the fact that you came out okay. 
You know, the other thing that's on the front of the card is that reminder of, thank you, mom, I came out awesome, I'm so awesome. And I couldn't have done that without the experience of interacting with you. You know, we have a lesson from Jesus, actually, in the Bible. And in the book of Matthew, there's a story. And the, the story is about what he said when he was told that his mother was waiting to speak to him. His mother was wanting to tell him something important. And other family members were waiting for him. And I cannot even begin to share this story without honoring the honor, without noticing the honor that has been paid to this story and the entire life of Mary by our own Shannon. Yeah. For those of you who don't know what I'm referring to, Shannon just recently completed an amazing and very successful run as Mary in a play called The Testament of Mary. And um, so in Matthew, the book of Matthew, it, it's re it is related that while Jesus was talking, he was told that his mother and brethren waited to speak with him. But he answered saying unto him that told him, who is my mother? And who are my brethren? He then told them that whoever does the will of God is his mother, his sister, and brother. Now we are not to suppose, Ernest Holmes summarizes this and says, we are not to suppose by this that he did not care for his earthly parents or his friends. He was explaining that anyone Anyone who lives in harmony with the truth automatically becomes the brother, the sister, or the mother of all. So while we honor mothers today, in mothers in the earthly incarnation, we also know that we are honoring simply the physical expression or the physical manifestation of the love of God. Who you become is up to you. So we may say it's all mom's fault, you know, the good stuff and the bad stuff. But what you do with that stuff, what you do with the good advice and the bad advice is totally and completely up to you. If you have been involved, engaged, or in any way attending a Science of Mind church, or center, or study group, or a teaching chapter, then you know that we believe this is the truth. That there is a power for good, it is available to all, and we all can use it. And so who I become is not my mom's responsibility. I can honor her today, I can be so grateful for her and everything that I've gotten, but it ultimately is up to each one of us. And so um, I, I had to think a lot about this because I wanted us to honor moms but also recognize that it doesn't release us of any responsibility. We are not allowed to be a victim to anything or any idea. And I was reminded of this Doug Larson quote. Would you read it aloud with me? The reason people blame things on the previous generation is that there's only one other choice. Yeah, if I don't blame it on mom, then you mean I have to take responsibility? It's up to me? Oh no, it's much easier to blame it on mom, right? But that's not who we are in science of mind. And so as we begin to um, move into the rest of our day, I just wanna encourage you to remember that you don't have to blame mom. You just get to choose who you want to be. And in today's message for Mother's Day in the Science of Mind magazine, Ernest Holmes, there's an Ernest Holmes quote. For in a certain sense, we are all mothers 
giving birth to new thoughts, new ideas, and new events. And why should we doubt that the same creative power which prepares the mother to give birth to her baby will not also prepare each one of us, physically and mentally, to give birth to a new experience? So this is our task for this week. Honor our mothers today and then use the idea, the concept of birthing life in our own lives. And in that way, we honor the truth of God, the love of God. So happy Mother's Day to us all. Let us pray. In this moment, I simply know that all there is is God, the power and the presence of the divine, the perfect example of love, the perfect example of joy, the perfect example of peace. I know that this perfect joy, perfect peace, and perfect love is already within me. That blueprint exists within me. Maybe I have seen it exhibited by my mother or some other woman who served in a mother-like role in my life. But I have it too. I have that power, that presence, that love waiting for me to bring it forth into the world. So let us set this intention right here and right now to be the example of love with others in our lives and with ourselves. Motherhood is simply that mission impossible that becomes possible. Every moment the commitment is made to show up as love. So I bless this time together and I'm so grateful for the opportunity today to honor moms, to honor mama, to honor ma, to honor our grandmothers, our stepmothers, our godmothers, to honor the love of God showing up in ways that nurture us, teach us, and grow us. And finally, with gratitude, I accept the responsibility for my own life. Grateful for what I have learned from my mother and other women. And even more grateful that I get to choose how to be awesome. Knowing the universe is already reconfiguring everything that needs to be reconfigured for this to be the truth, I just release anything that's out of alignment with this intention. And with the power and the presence of Christ consciousness guiding me, I let it go. Take a breath. And so it is.